The Tower Point Nature Reserve is a protected nature reserve that is located in Sutherland Shire, southern Sydney, New South Wales, in eastern Australia. The 603 hectare 1, acre reserve is situated on the southern shores of Botany Bay at Kernel, within the Sutherland Shire. The reserve is protected under the Ramsar Convention as a wetland of international importance as an important breeding ground for many vulnerable, protected, or endangered species. The Tower Point Aquatic Nature Reserve is located in the surrounding waterways. Topic: History. Kernel was inhabited by the Darawal people, and there are three middens and one relic that still remain today at the Tower Point Nature Reserve. Captain Cook mapped Botany Bay when he landed in 1770, including Tower Point. Early European colonialists ran horses and cattle on Tower Point, despite the poor condition of the land for such a purpose. In 1827, Tower Point and Tower Bay were recorded as local names by the surveyor Robert Dixon. Another name known for the area was Stinkpot Bay. In 1861, Thomas Holt bought Tower Point and divided it into paddocks for grazing or growing corn. Sheep grazing was particularly disastrous, and many thousands of sheep died of foot rot and are buried at Tower Point. In the late 1870s, Thomas Holt began oyster farming at Weenie Bay in Tower Point. In 1935, the Parks and Playgrounds movement of New South Wales opposed an application to mine for shell at Tower Point. During World War II, a radar station was established, and a causeway built. In 1946, Tower Point was considered as a location for a second Sydney airport. In the 1960s, movement began to preserve Tower Point, led initially by the President of Sutherland Shire, Arthur Geechett, and Tom Uren, the then Federal Minister for Urban Affairs. In 1965, Ian Griffith, state MP for Cronulla, praised the idea, but was met by community backlash. In March 1969, the then Prime Minister, John Gordon ruled out Tower Point as a potential site for a second airport, citing community noise problems. The opening to Botany Bay was dredged in the 1970s to assist shipping, but this refracted the wave patterns in the bay, focusing them on Tower Point, causing erosion. The building of the revetment wall in Port Botany was also thought to contribute to the changed wave patterns. In 1974 and 1975, the waves off Tower were so strong that teens surfed there. Following lobbying by Ray Thorburn, the reserve was bought by the Commonwealth in 1975, attempting to fulfill obligations to Jamba, which would come into force in April 1981. This was the first time that the Australian government had bought land for nature conservation purposes within a state. On 10 September 1979 the oil tanker World Encouragement spilled approximately 95 tonnes 105 short tons of crude oil into Botany Bay. Mangroves at Keybray Bay, Weenie Bay and Tower Point were impacted 100 hectares 250 acres of mangroves were affected, and 4.4 hectares 11 acres died. In 1981, another oil spill occurred at the Matraville refinery, causing more damage to the mangroves. In 1982, Tower Point was officially made a nature reserve. In 1983, Tower was suffering from erosion. The elephant's trunk, a peninsula of Tower, had shrunk to three meters wide. The seagrasses were also being eaten by sea urchins. The population had exploded from 20,000 per hectare in 1979 to 80,000 by 1983. It was declared a Ramsar site or wetland of international importance in 1984, at the time meeting Ramsar criteria 1, 2, 3 and 6. In 2009, Tower Point met Ramsar criteria 2, 3, 4 and 8. In 1987, the Tower Point Aquatic Nature Reserve was created, covering 1,400 hectares 3, acres in the waterways surrounding Tower Point. Tower Point Nature Reserve also attempts to meet the federal government's obligations to CAMBA, which came into force in 1988. In 1990, the elephant's trunk was eroded so much that the tip broke off into an island. By this time, Tower Beach was so eroded that trees that were part of the forest were tumbling into the water. 
The Friends of Tower Point Volunteer Group was founded in February 1997 and they do such activities as bush regeneration, seed collection, vegetation surveys and habitat creation for the Little Turn. They also coordinate the annual Clean Up Australia Day activities at Tower Point. Habitat creation involves sandbagging the eroding Tower Lagoon, nest tagging, and clearing areas around nests. In 2003, it was proposed to undertake beach nourishment at Tower Point, involving 60,000 cubic metres of sand. While this had an immediate negative effect on some amphipod species, they had recovered by 2005. In January 2004, 24 little tern were killed after picnickers and a dog accidentally landed on Tower Spit Island. In 2004, a $1.5 million dredging project was undertaken to cut off Tower Spit Island from the rest of Tower Point to provide a fox free environment. In around 2007, the La Perouse Aboriginal community began sending trainees to work in the area for the National Parks and Wildlife Service as part of the Tower Team, combining bush regeneration work with learning traditional Aboriginal cultural skills. In 2010, artificial roosting posts were installed by the Office of Environment and Heritage to supplement the roosting habitat in the area. In the 2010 breeding season, 72 little tern fledged. In 2012, the site received a Grey Globe Award of Shame, given to Ramsar sites that are considered to be under threat. In 2013, the Botany Bay National Park and 800 hectares 2, acres of land including Tower Point Nature Reserve were to be included on the State Heritage Register. <laughs> <laughs> Habitats Tower Point, atop an ancient river delta deposit, has many distinct habitats. These diverse habitats are part of why Tower Point is a Ramsar site. The habitats of the reserve are salt marshes, mangroves, littoral rainforests, turpentine forests, lagoons. Beaches in 2001, the mangrove forests of Tower Point were described as varying in width between tens and hundreds of meters and largely consisting of the gray mangrove Avicennia marina with the river mangrove Aegiceras corniculatum growing in patches along the edge of the forest closest to the landward edge. Topic: <laughs> Species Tower Point Nature Reserve is home to many endangered, vulnerable, protected and exotic species. This list is from the New South Wales Government's Environment and Heritage Department website. A comprehensive listing, including numbers, scientific names, and protection status, can be found at this link. <laughs> Birds Yellow Thornbill Brown thornbill, striated field wren, chestnut rumped heath wren, mangrove jerigon, brown jerigon, white browed scrub wren, brown goshawk, grey goshawk, swamp harrier, black shouldered kite, white bellied sea eagle, chestnut teal, grey teal. Australasian shoveler, black swan, Pacific black duck, hardhead, musk duck, Australian wood duck, Australian shell duck, Australasian darter, Oriental darter, great egret, cattle egret, intermediate egret, little egret, white faced heron. Eastern Reef Egret Grey Butcherbird Pied Currawong Bush Stone Curlew Black-faced Cuckooshrike Double-banded Plover Greater Sand Plover Pacific Golden Plover Grey Plover White-throated Treecreeper Bar-shouldered Dove Dollarbird Australian Raven Fan-tailed cuckoo Shining bronze cuckoo Spangled drongo Leaden flycatcher Grey fantail Willy wagtail Red-browed finch Australian hobby P. 
Peregrine falcon Sooty oystercatcher Australian pied oystercatcher Sacred kingfisher Welcome swallow Silver gull Little tern Crested tern Caspian tern Arctic tern Superb fairy wren Variegated fairy wren Southern emu wren Eastern spinebill Little wattle bird White fronted chat Brown honey eater New Holland honey eater Australian pipit Eurasian blackbird Grey shrike thrush Rufus whistler Spotted pardalote Australian pelican Eastern yellow robin Little pied cormorant Little black cormorant Great cormorant Pied cormorant Stubble quail Hoary-headed grebe Blue wing parrot Eastern rosella Crimson rosella Red whiskered bulbul Lewin's rail Sharp-tailed sandpiper Curlew sandpiper Great knot Bar-tailed godwit Eastern curlew Little curlew Wimbrel Common greenshank Common starling Golden-headed sister cola Royal spoonbill Glossy ibis Australian white ibis Painted buttonquail Silver eye Whistling kite Striated heron Australian magpie Sulphur-crested cockatoo Galah Masked lapwing Mistletoe bird Magpie lark Restless flycatcher Kookaburra Kelp gull Yellow-faced honeyeater Lewin's honeyeater White-napped honeyeater Olive-backed oriole Golden whistler House sparrow Rose robin Tawny frogmouth Rainbow lorikeet Southern boobook Common miner Tawny grassbird Australian masked owl Brown quail Great crested grebe Australasian grebe Rock dove Brown cuckoo dove Crested pigeon Spotted turtle dove White-throated needletail Little penguin Australasian bittern Nankeen night heron Topic: Amphibians. Green and golden bell frog. Kefirstein's tree frog. Common eastern froglet. Striped marsh frog. Perrin's tree frog. Jarvis Bay tree frog. Topic: Mammals. Dingo. Dog. Fox Dugong Rabbit House mouse Brown rat Black rat Cat Common brushtail possum Gray-headed flying fox Lesser long-eared bat Greater broad-nosed bat Little forest bat Topic. Reptiles Jackie Lashdale Eastern snake-necked turtle Red-bellied black snake Eastern small-eyed snake Black-bellied swamp snake Dark-flecked garden sunskink Pale-flecked garden sunskink Yellow-bellied three-toed skink Eastern blue tongue Robust stenotus Eastern water skink Bard-sided skink Weasel skink Topic. Plants Grey mangrove Sickle fern New Zealand spinach P. 
Parrot alstroemeria Fennel Moth vine Milk vine Common silk pod Fruit salad plant Arum lily English ivy Asparagus fern Bridal creeper Crofton weed Cobbler's pegs Boneseed Bitu bush Swamp oak Native wandering dew Tree broom heath Coffee bush Wombat berry Port Jackson fig, rusty fig Coxspur thorn Muttonwood Swamp paperbark Broadleaved paperbark Pixie caps Inkweed Sweet pittosporum Pampas grass Panic velt grass Rambling dock Coastal banksia Tuckaroo Slender grape Lantana Nightshade Blackberry Wild olive Samphire Magenta lily pili Topic: Human effects. The ecosystem surrounding Tower Point has been impacted as a result of human interaction. Topic: Positive effects. Humans can maximize the area of healthy, functioning intertidal wetlands by minimizing their impacts and by developing management strategies that protect, and where possible rehabilitate these ecosystems at risk. The following are positive ways of trying to protect or rehabilitate intertidal wetlands. Exclusion – Those responsible for the management of wetland areas often facilitate public access to a small, designated area while restricting access to other areas. Provision of defined boardwalks and walkways is a management strategy used to restrict access to vulnerable areas, as is the issuing of permits whilst visiting Tower Point Nature Reserve. Education In the past, wetlands were regarded as wastelands. Education campaigns have helped to change public perceptions and foster public support for the wetlands. Due to their location in the water catchment area, education programs need to teach about total catchment management programs. Educational programs include guided tours for the general public, school visits, media liaison, information centers, conference presentations, interpretive signage, publications and facts sheets. Staff should also include education officers. Action: Too little is known about the intertidal wetland system to successfully reinstate all natural conditions. Management plans focus on the rehabilitation of the site and the removal of human-induced stresses. For example, fox and rabbit baiting, removal of weeds at Weedy Pond. Design. Design interventions have proved successful in minimizing sources of natural stress. At Tower Point Beach, for example, there is a sandbag wall to help prevent salt water from leaking into the freshwater Tower Lagoon. Legislation. Legislation and regulations are used to protect Tower Point wetlands. Conventions that Australia has signed in regard to Tower Point wetlands are the Ramsar Convention, the Japan-Australia Migratory Bird Agreement and the China-Australia Migratory Bird Agreement Legislation that Australia and New South Wales has passed in regard to Tower Point wetlands are the Australian Wetlands Policy, the New South Wales Wetlands Management Policy and the State and Environmental Planning Policy 14 on coastal wetlands. Topic. Negative effects Changed wind patterns, due to high-rise near some wetland areas e.g. Bicentennial Park South, at Rockdale. Alteration of water flows, through construction of roads. Removal of resources for urban and industrial land uses, these also increase turbidity and toxins in the water supplied to mangroves. The removal can also result in changed energy flows and nutrient cycles, affecting food chains for both sedentary and migratory fauna. Replacement of wetland areas, for parks, playing fields or pasture. Destruction of sea grasses, in areas adjoining wetlands can affect energy flows and nutrient cycles as species levels will be affected. 
Introduction of exotic species, e.g. foxes, rabbits, sheep, cattle, pigs. Change energy flows and nutrient cycles. Birds are particularly affected, for example the little tern. Indirect influences from adjacent sites, e.g. weed infestation Lantana, Tower Point, carried into the wetlands by horses from the nearby stables. Trampling, from illegal access Threat of oil spills, Kernel Refinery near Tower Point, 31 oil spills between 1957 and 1987 averaging 49,000 litres 11,000 imp gal, 13,000 US gal. Recreational horse riding, on the reserve and unsupervised recreational use of the reserve e.g. dog walking Boating, disturbs wildlife in the park, and creates pollution. Fishing, kills fish, which affects the food chains operating within the reserve. Erosion of Tower Beach, due to wave refraction from the Sydney Airport runway which causes the freshwater Tower Point Lagoon to become saline. Fragmentation of the reserve, by private land ownership Bay development, in general, including the Sydney Airport runway and the oil refinery. There have also been concerns that the Sydney desalination plant will impact negatively on the reserve. Illegal rubbish dumping, has occurred both in the reserve and near the entrance. In late 2004, a large amount of dumped asbestos was discovered. Land destabilization, due to extensive mining of the larger dunes on Tower Point during the 20th century it has been suggested that if the site was ravaged by strong enough storms breaks in the point could occur and breach the gentle lagoons of Tower Point Runoff, due to most of the surrounding land being used for urban and industrial purposes. Stormwater from the Kernel Refinery runs through the Ramsar listed area of Tower Point Nature Reserve. Subsidence, near the walkway, subsidence has been recorded, which has encouraged the establishment of mangroves in the upper swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Management of the reserve <laughs> Traditional The traditional objectives for the management of wetland areas were built around the use of wetland resources for food, shelter and tools. Grey mangrove wood, for example, was used to make shields, shells were made into fishing hooks, and marine animals were used for food. Topic contemporary identify management goals and objectives. Today, management plans for wetlands focus on the preservation and sustainable use of sites for recreation, conservation and education purposes. This may involve some exclusion zones but many areas are open to recreational and educational activities. Define management unit and boundaries. The management unit for many intertidal wetlands is often difficult to define because of the large number of stakeholders. For example, the Tower Point wetland has input from New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service, New South Wales Fisheries, Sutherland Shire Council, Friends of Tower Point and recreational users. Develop and implement management plans. An intertidal wetland is a dynamic system. As our knowledge of ecosystems has increased, community attitudes have changed. Communities are now demanding that these ecosystems are protected and effectively managed. Care has been taken to develop management plans that are both realistic and flexible. They need to take into account scientific and technological advances, changing social and political attitudes, and variations in the level of funding. Management plans also need to be consistent with Australia's international obligations under JAMBA, CAMBA and Ramsar. Applicable legislation and international environmental law International environmental law Ramsar Convention 1971, Jamba 1981, Bonn Convention 1983, CAMBA 1988, ROKAMBA 2006, The Partnership for the Conservation of Migratory Waterbirds and the Sustainable Use of Their Habitats in the East Asian Australasian Flyway 2006, Convention on Biological Diversity 1992. Federal environmental law 
As the Tower Point area is Ramsar listed, this attracts the operation of the Federal Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999 and regulations. Section 17b provides that a person is guilty of a criminal offence if a the person takes an action c. S. and b the action results or will result in a significant impact on the ecological character of a wetland, and c. the wetland is a declared Ramsar wetland. Tower Point Nature Reserve is listed a component of littoral rainforest and coastal vine thickets of eastern Australia, a critically endangered ecological community under the EPBC Act. State environmental law In addition to land use planning law, the following acts are applicable National Parks and Wildlife Act 1974 New South Wales, Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979 New South Wales, Fisheries Management Act 1994 New South Wales, Threatened Species Conservation Act 1995 New South Wales and applicable SEPPs e.g. State Environmental Planning Policy No. 39. Spit Island Bird Habitat Following a review, several SEPPs were repealed in favor of using local environmental plans. Tower Point Nature Reserve has been listed as being part of the Coastal Dune Littoral Rainforest Ecological Community, an endangered ecological community under the TSC Act. 